This is the Sigma 60 to 600 lens for Sony E mount and L mount. Yeah, this is for mirrorless cameras. So it's the DN line, which I think stands for that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> you don't confuse it with the DSLR EF mount 60 to 600, you might know, because this is totally new. It's probably much sharper and better. I think it, the people that would be interested in this are the people that are shooting with the Sony 200 to 600 or looking for something comparable. It's the same price as the Sony 200 to 600, but you get some extra millimeters up front. You have that 60 to 200 range, which the Sony doesn't have. And we're gonna talk about my, why you might want that. I think it's a big deal because it's like you get this lens, plus you get a free 70 to 200 f4 lens built right in and i think you're going to need that if you go to the zoo yeah because sometimes the animals are far away but sometimes they're up close you can go all the way back to 60 millimeters or if you're on a safari you often can't be swishing lenses and stuff and an animal can come they can be on the horizon or they can come right up to your truck it adds so much versatility well i will say that i even regularly am getting too close to animals for my lens and then i can't focus or they're overfilling the frame so i could see that focal length being really helpful. Right, those moments when you get close are the best moments. Yeah. Let's take a look at the design of these two lenses. Let's start by comparing the size. You can see that the Sigma is a little bit smaller. We have both of the lens hoods reversed so that you're just seeing the lens. So it's easier to pack, but when you actually go to use it, wildlife lenses are frequently used at the long end and the whole thing telescopes. Whereas that one, it's the zooming is totally internal. Yeah, that is something I like about using the Sony. Yeah, for one, I know from my past experience that any zoom lens that pushes in and out like that is also sucking in air. And that is not a problem in the first couple of months of usage. But when I've had these lenses for five or 10 years, they end up with a whole bunch of dust and it's more expensive to try to clean it than it is to just get rid of it. So each one of these is sucking air in and out. That's going to build up over time. Mine doesn't suck. Um, it also changes the entire balance of it. Let me grab my tripod and I'll show you. First, this is brilliant. The foot has an Arca style quick release plate built into it. You can get this for the Sony, but it's an $80 third party upgrade. So it snaps right into my gimbal head here and I can lock it in. And let's see. Okay, that's a little front heavy. So I got to balance this. There we go. Now look, perfectly balanced. But here comes a bird. I zoom into 600 millimeters and okay, now my gimbal's out of balance again. So let me just loosen this up and I got to pull it back. Let me see. Oh, you know what? The foot is actually, it's too short to balance it zoomed out where you're probably going to spend most of your time. So the foot needs to be longer or it's just, it's a disadvantage of it. And in fact, using this in my kayak, I would be leaning out the side of my kayak and I would go from 60 to 600 millimeters to zoom in on a bird. And the shift in weight was enough that it shifted the entire balance of my kayak a little bit. And I ended up having to like balance it, counterbalance it with my body. So don't underestimate just how much this lens weighs. It's a full pound heavier than the Sony lens, but it actually feels like way more than that when you zoom out because so much of the weight is extended at the end. Let's talk about sharpness because you know we're going to pixel peep. Which one of these lenses is sharper? Well, sharpness is super important for wildlife because you always end up cropping in, right? I took them into the lab and did a very controlled test with still subjects. And I found that at 200 millimeters, at 600 millimeters, the Sony lens was noticeably sharper on a 50 megapixel camera. But the Sigma has that entire range from 200 to 60 that this cannot even compare to. So I compared 60 millimeters to the Sony 24 to 105 F4G, a very good kit lens. And at 60 millimeters, the Sigma was sharper than that kit lens, which I was absolutely shocked about because that this is a 10 X zoom. It shouldn't be this good. I expected worse out of it. So it's not quite as good as that Sony lens but I think it's excellent. I just want to say in the lab, I think that comparing them under controlled circumstances is valuable. But when you're out taking wildlife photos, especially at 600 millimeters, there are so many other factors that can change the sharpness of a lens, like 
the atmosphere, if there's fog or water in the air. So I'd like to test them in a real world circumstance right now. It's actually a very cool, crisp, clear day, but let's take some sample shots side by side and see what we get. Okay. Do those differences show in the real world? There's a dog walker. Oh, I'm such a creep. I'm a creep. If you don't pick up your poop, I'm gonna know. <laughs> If you're watching in 4K, this is zoomed in 400%. I do not see any difference between these two at 600 millimeters. What makes a bigger difference is how close you can get to the subject, whether you get the right lighting, of course, photographer skills. Here are samples with the Sony A9 at 24 megapixels, which shows even less difference. The next thing that we want to check is the magnification, and that's how close you can focus with your lens. That's important if you're taking close-up photos like birds at a feeder or if you're lucky enough to get close to an animal in the wild. They're the same. It's boring, but they're the same. But I do want to show you, at 60 millimeters, look how close I can focus. I'm at the minimum focusing distance. Just hold still. I'm just going to focus on your eye. Look over here a little bit. This is uncomfortable. There you go. Nice tight portraits. <laughs> look look value, at me. I value my personal space. But I also have to talk about focus breathing, what I call focal shrinking for stills photographers. These are both 600 millimeter lenses when measured focused at infinity, at the farthest possible distance. When you focus closer, that focal length shrinks on both of these lenses. That's because, you know, you can see this lens gets bigger as I zoom out, but as I focus closer it also needs to grow and that growth takes away from the focal length both of these lenses focused at close subjects go from 600 millimeters to about 325 millimeters and that is a big big difference if you can imagine if you've been waiting for that special bird to show up at your feeder and you want as much detail as possible and your 600 millimeter lens is 325 millimeters because you've gotten close like it's so frustrating you get closer and the lens is zooming back to fight you yeah you should be aware of that, but you can resolve it by adding extension tubes. You're gonna need like 30, maybe 45 millimeters of extension tube. Just experiment with the amount that you need. And then you have to take off your extension tube if you're focusing far. Yeah, it, it is a real pain. Watching this video back, I realized focus breathing requires a little more explanation. Now I'm setting the Sony 200 to 600 all the way to 600 millimeters, and I'm going to switch the focusing to manual focus. I'm moving the focusing ring until it's focused as close as possible. And now I'm going to walk towards my subject until I am as close as I can possibly get. That's how big the subject is. Now, how do I know that this is not a true 600 millimeters? Well, I'm going to put on extension tubes. I'm being careful not to move from my spot. I'm standing in exactly the same spot. These extension tubes are hollow. They simply move the lens away from the camera. And again, lens is still at 600 millimeters and I'm simply going to refocus on my subject. Look how much bigger it is in the frame, even though I did not move closer, nor did I zoom in. They're both at the exact same settings. Inexpensive extension tubes, they can be third party as long as they support autofocus, work great and can almost double your focal length on big telephoto zooms like this. Oh, how do I determine what the realistic focal length is? I look at the framing of the subject without the extension tubes, and then I zoom back. And in this case, I need to be at about 325 millimeters to get the subject the same size in the frame. Let's talk about autofocus because good autofocus isn't always a given with a long lens, especially a third party lens, but the Sigma 60 to 600 seems to work really well. Yeah, I found it performed just as well as the 200 to 600 did. It got almost 100% of shots in focus using our Sony A1. Look, it's January in Connecticut and all the smart wildlife has gone down to Florida to be photographed by Mark Smith. So all we have left up here are dumb seagulls and dumb ducks. But look, here's a seagull flying and the 60 to 600 is keeping up with it perfectly. And oh my god, this seagull thinks it's an osprey. It caught a fish. I've never seen this before. Look, it can barely fly and it has to push off the water with its feet. It takes the fish to the beach to eat it, but then another seagull shows up and it steals the fish. But then they start fighting and the fish escapes in the ocean and swims off completely fine because they're seagulls. I told you earlier, they're dumb. But, and this is a big gotcha here, the Sony A1 limits all third-party lenses to 15 frames per second. It'll do 30 frames per second with your 200 to 600, but only 15 with this. 
That's disappointing. It feels unfair to me, right? Because it's an arbitrary limit. I feel like this lens could keep up with that lens if it weren't hindered by the Sony A1. But if you're a Sony A1 shooter, there's nothing you can do about that. And I know for me, I wouldn't want to give up that possibility of a higher frame rate. So for Sony A1 users, I feel like for that reason alone, you pretty much have to stick with the Sony. But I don't, I, it feels so unfair. I don't like that companies are starting to limit third party providers. It hurts us as the consumer and the photographer. So I'm hoping that we don't see more of that. Yeah, though Sony is basically the good one. Like this is only coming out for Sony E-mount because they allow everybody to just use their lens mount. Like Canon blocks them completely and Nikon seems to require some additional negotiations. Yeah, I know, but it's still kind of sneaky because then people need to watch some in-depth review. What are we at, like 10 minutes now to find out that it's not going to have the same frame rate? Yeah. Like, it's not fair. Come on. But if you use a slower camera, it shouldn't make any difference. Yeah. I'm excited to talk about stabilization because the Sigma 60 to 600 has incredible stabilization. And that means you can hand hold the camera for longer at a, at a lower shutter speed. I think this is super important with wildlife photography because so often you're in lower light, either it's dusk or it's dawn or you're in the woods or somewhere heavily shaded. I often shoot 600 millimeters handheld at about like 125th when I'm shooting little birds in the woods. Yeah. Um, but I will have to shoot 10 shots to get one sharp shot. With the Sigma, I got about twice as many sharp shots as I did with the Sony. So it has some amazing stabilization system built into it. That's a practical feature. Yeah, big win for that. Let's wrap this up. These okay. are both $2,000. Which do you think people should get? I think that if they have uh, a camera with a, with a very high frame rate, like a Alpha 1, they should go with the Sony just because the frame rate won't be limited. But I think that if that's not going to be an issue, the Sigma is a great option. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more versatile. If you are a frequent zoo shooter, if you plan on going on safari, or if you want a free 7200 F4 like built in, this is the right choice. If you're a dedicated wildlife shooter, the extra pound is going to bother you. The fact that it is unbalanced when you zoom, mm -hmm. I don't love that. I, th there are things I can live with. I can live with those things. But the Sony certainly going to be the better choice for us shooting in our kayak. Yeah, and I also don't think that if you're hand holding the change in balance is going to impact you that much. You really just yeah. naturally adapt. It's more if you're shooting on a tripod uh, that you're going to notice that difference. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more reviews like this, hit subscribe. If there's more you want to know about this lens, you can ask us in the comments. And thanks for watching. Uh, and by the way, we're both coming out of a cold. So, oh gosh, I'm if so tired. this video seems like low production value, that's yeah, that's because we are exhausted. <laughs> it was true. We got, I was winded walking here from the parking lot. Yeah, I'm really tired, but Thanks. we did it. <laughs>